Linnea, I'm gonna make today's puzzle appear in my hand. Ready? Three, two, one. There it is. Whoa! Houdini's torture cell. It's a metal puzzle, it's sequential discovery. Check it out in this episode of Puzzle Time. Welcome to episode 131 of Puzzle Time. In this episode, we're talking about the Houdini's torture cell. Let's open this up one now. It's from Mr. Puzzle Australia, and that is a guy named Brian Young. Now this puzzle is not a brand new release. It is a re-release of an older puzzle called Houdini's torture cell, but one that was made in wood. Initially, the uh, wood version came out in 2011, and it was based on a puzzle called The Opening Bat, which was released in 2010. So this is like a, a smaller idea based off of this opening bat. Um, so in this puzzle, the idea or the, the objective is to get that little ball bearing out of the puzzle. It's a sequential discovery puzzle. And it's a level 8 on the Puzzle Master difficulty rating scale, which runs from 5 to 10. Now, a bit more about this puzzle. There is the winner of the jury first prize in the 2012 Nob Yoshikahara Design Competition, which is an event that takes place at IPP, which is the International Puzzle Party, which is where a whole bunch of puzzle designers and puzzle people get together. And it's just this worldwide competition or place to show off some of your new puzzles. It's a good puzzle. I really yeah, like yeah. it. Yeah. Now, if you want to see a bit more about the original, like I said, it's based off of a puzzle called The Opening Bat. The original puzzle uh you can find a bit more about it in a video on youtube from a guy named neil hutchison who has one of the opening bat puzzles he actually has number one of 99 there was 99 of them made neil has number one which is pretty cool is so pretty cool, yeah. check out the video link in the description to neil's video and you can find a bit more about the opening bat he does not show the solution but he does talk about the puzzle and uh, shows you a bit of like kind of what's happening. It's a more complex version of this. I, I didn't s see some of the solution, but it, it, my understanding is it's like this kind of concept with a few more steps on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Now, Linnea, it can be found, uh, a bit more information can also be found in Pat Hajek's book, Enter If You Can, which is a puzzle book that has a lock on it. We sell it on the Puzzle Master website. Again, link in the description if you want to find out more about that or purchase it. It does talk about Houdini's torture cell and I believe the opening bat. And if you want to see solves to this or more information on this puzzle, you can check out um, Chris Ramsey and Beats and Pieces both do the original wood version. Yeah. And then if you want to check out this metal version, um, Puzzled Wolf and Puzzle Wander and Downtime Fun have this one. Okay. Yeah. Now, the interesting thing, the original wood version was actually square. So the base was square instead of a, a hexagon. And the, uh, the, the cylinder, the tube of this puzzle was squared off too. So it was a different looking puzzle uh, then. It had the same solution. Uh, again, it was made out of wood. This is metal. Um, but one thing I like is I watched Beats and Pieces video and he not only had the original puzzle, but he also had the original like paper insert from it. There's some like little graphics on there. So it's a little bit more involved here there. Um, I feel like um, both Beats and Pieces and Chris Ramsey probably bought theirs off of auction sites, um, but Chris's didn't have the insert. At least oh, not that okay. they showed on his his video. Yeah. So I like that. I like the the idea there that the original insert was in there. And this does have like the the, the Chinese version here does have an insert which does have the solution in there. I so just be like careful that. if you get it. <laughs> don't go opening the paper right away because it does have the solution in there. It has a like pictures of the solution. So don't do that. But that is uh, Houdini's torture cell. Keep an eye out for for this puzzle on our website. And if you want, uh, I have, we have a, a short clip from Puzzle Insider, and it's in episode six of Puzzle Insider. Now, Puzzle Insider is the puzzle wanderer, Gregory, who um, shoots some video for us at Puzzle Master. And it's kind of like this puzzle news show is how I describe it. So check this out, Puzzle Insider, episode six. He talks about Brian Young, the opening bat, and Houdini's torture cell. Check it out.
If you've been a few weeks into puzzling, you probably know who is Brian Young. This is one of the best puzzle builders in the world and a very, very good puzzle designer who designed countless sequential discovery limited edition puzzles that are very sought after. One of the limited edition puzzles he has designed in the past years is the opening bat, which is a puzzle that resembles a bat for cricket. One of the locks in this puzzle was interesting enough for Mr. Young to produce another puzzle out of this lock. And this lock mechanism made the Houdini's torture cell. The Houdini's torture cell has been produced in 2011. 282 copies were made and were exchanged in IPP 31 in Berlin. It was sold originally for 47 Australian dollars, which is very, very cheap but when auction Houdini torture sales got insane prices on it. insane prices June 2017 it was sold for $230 public auction in January 2020 455 euros puzzle paradise on August 2020 1000 British pounds that's insane and this is even more crazy May 2021 it was sold on puzzle paradise for 2400 Australian dollars this is groundbreaking. And then something very good happened. Back in Mr. Puzzle, they decided to remake this puzzle. But this time, they made it from metal. Like the brass cannon, they mass produced the Houdini's torture cell. So now this puzzle is available to the mass public and costs only 32 Australian dollars, which is fantastic. This is around 25 US dollars. I think this is amazing news. Me personally, I'm all in for making puzzles as public as possible. I asked you about it. So first of all, it was a big project. It required a lot of ping pong between Brian Young and the Chinese manufacturer because there are some parts that really need to be tested to start production. Production in general is a very difficult sport. Also, I was really hoping that this would be the start of making a lot of more limited puzzles unlimited, but currently there's no plans from Mr. Puzzle's team to make more puzzles available to the mass public. It's just impossible to make limited puzzles like the opening bat or the SMS box available to the mass public and that's because they're just too complex to make. The Houdin Social Cell has probably been a special occasion where this is possible, but usually this won't be possible, which saddens me a bit, but also I'm actually not very surprised. Now this has been confirmed. All the puzzles that are framed as limited from Mr. Puzzle back to 1993 will not be ever available again from Mr. Puzzle, but only from the second hand. Okay, so that was episode six of Puzzle Insider. Make sure you check out more of Puzzle Insider's videos. They come out once a month and uh, I love his stuff. Man. Greg does a great job. Okay, let's move into the online buzz. The online buzz. Wait, today's online buzz is... I like this one. Now, you, one, yeah. you didn't watch the full thing. You do need to go watch it on the app. Uh, as do you guys, because it's from a guy named Doc Hitchcock, which I never heard of, but you, we, we were subscribed to his channel. I so. think we've seen one of his puzzle puzzles. Yeah, we must have. He, he had a few puzzle videos, not a lot. But the thing I like is he did uh, a couple of film black puzzles. Now, if you're not familiar with Philip Black. He does these crazy big sequential discovery puzzles that are 3D printed. Um, and they're, they're probably some of the best 3D printed puzzles out there. He yeah, does a phenomenal special. job. His puzzles cost a lot though. They're, they're $1,200 puzzles. Um, I think that's 1200 American. Yeah, yeah. I think it's American. something like that. Yeah, but Doc Hitchcock is a dermatologist. I believe uh, a dermatologist who's gotten into puzzles. So he has a puzzle YouTube channel. And um, yeah, he did Philip Black's newest puzzle called Excalibur, the Excalibur puzzle. I don't love the name mostly because man, there's multiple puzzles already named Excalibur. Yeah. So I feel like we didn't really need another puzzle named Excalibur, but the puzzle is phenomenal. And I think I think probably the best made puzzle from Philip Black yet. He's had three big ones. It's been, what's it, Snowblock? And then Blackjack. Blackjack, and now Excalibur. And this Excalibur is, is next level. Like in the printing and everything, the puzzle itself is amazing. It is an amazing, amazing sequential discovery puzzle where you're trying to find a knight. You're trying to move this knight around the puzzle. He's gonna get the Excalibur sword out, and then he's gonna release a token. There's a little like, token he gets at the end of the puzzle. 
very cool. Make sure you go check it out. Uh, also, you can check out the Blackjack Salt. I have not watched that, but if you want to watch the Blackjack, so I'd like to see how that's solved. But have you have you solved any of it? Or seen any solution to that? No, I haven't black? really had no. a chance to look into them much. I don't know if anybody's done Philip Black's puzzles. Like the, mm -hmm. A solve. This is the only solve of any of his puzzles I've seen. So definitely go check out Doc Hitchcock's channel. Um, I don't know if he has snow block. They definitely was not Yeah, but to be solving those puzzles, that's pretty crazy. Yeah, yeah, he does a good job on the video. I think I, I, it's, a, it's about a half hour long video. He does a really good job solving it. So definitely go check that out. It was well worth watching. Okay, next we're gonna move on to the brain teaser version or portion of the, the episode. And Linnea, you wanna talk about this one? It's a, our yes. favorite puzzle bus. Puzzle bus, yeah. Mm -hmm. They're these. the most popular on our social media yeah. too. Like lots of people like them. I usually try to throw like one curveball one in there and then kind of some easier ones and just some common ones, but the puzzle are my, my favorite. Yeah. You, and you you make these, right? Like you you make yeah. them yourself. Yeah. Sometimes yeah. I get ideas for certain ones, but sometimes I just come up with the idea myself too for them. So which was your favorite on this one? Um, I like the like do you want me to tell you the answer or just point out which I don't one? Know. Yeah. Let's do the answer one. Do the answer one. Um it's the good eye or good looking. Good looking. Here. That was the one that everyone so was had, confused on. Yeah. So it's it's yeah, good good looking. I mean you guys can see it on the screen there which one it was. I had trouble with some of these. The um yeah. the of bun in one. Oh, I, yeah. I could not see that one. <laughs> I had to go into the comment section on, on Facebook and, and find out what the answer was because I couldn't get that one. I also couldn't get um, the one with easy and then a whole bunch of letter eyes behind it. Yeah. Couldn't get that one either. But I did, there was a few of them. Like, I mean, I, I feel like with the puzzle rebus, I like them because I can see a few of them and I'm like, I know the answer to them right away. And then there's other ones where I have to sit down and like, okay, what is this? I also couldn't get the time one. Oh, yeah. No idea on that. I, couldn't figure that one out. So um, yeah, but they're good. I love Puzz Rebus. Go to our Facebook page and uh, Linnea posts brain teasers and different things like this. And we just wanted to show you one of them today, but there is lots more there. And you do a whole bunch of different styles, right? Yeah. So they're great. Okay, next, our, we're gonna talk about a YouTube review. Now each week we, or each month, we talk about a different you, review video. Uh, on our YouTube channel because there's lots of reviews, lots of solutions that also get posted on our channel. Now this review is one that has been getting a ton of views lately on our channel. It's been um, one of our most popular puzzles or puzzle review videos in the last like month, I think. And it's a review by Yvonne, the puzzle guy. Uh, Lene, do you want to talk about it a bit more? Because you watched this one, right? Yeah. So this is Cast Planet. So it's uh, one of Haniyama's newest puzzles. Yeah, it was released early this year, I think. 2022 like yeah. February yeah. yeah so basically it's a maze where you have to get to release the two parts from each other and it looks um, like a planet it looks like yeah. a planet with a ring around it really yeah. cool looking puzzle I think it's one of my favorites it I, I is, just yeah. like space go check out our YouTube channel and watch more reviews more solutions we have a lot you know you know we recently just posted our 1400th video on YouTube <laughs> 1400 videos we have a massive library lots of stuff guys if it's not there um Puzzle Master doesn't have it, so <laughs> yeah. But last but not least, uh, I want to talk a bit about a sad moment here this last year, and that is the death of uh, a friend of Puzzle Master named Ewan Meffert. Now, some of you may not be familiar with him, but uh, he died in April 2022. He was one of the pioneers of the twisty puzzles. Uh, Rubik's Cube, I think as most people know them, but like twisty puzzles is like the technical name for them. Rubik's is actually a brand, and Rubik's was the competition to E.W.A. Meffert's company, which was Meffert's Puzzles. And um, a funny thing, like a, a lot of people don't, if you're not familiar with Twisty Puzzles, you may not know E.W.A. Meffert, but he actually designed his Pyraminx puzzle before Rubik's did their puzzle in the yeah. 80s. So he was actually the first guy to ever do Twisty Puzzles. And uh, my understanding is his Pyraminx puzzle sold uh, over 90 million copies of it. So he sold a lot of them. And I imagine his stuff often got just confused with Rubik's because they kind of were the big brand that people knew, but he was doing a lot. He uh, also had another puzzle called Mega Minx. Um, and he he worked with all, a lot of different puzzle designs. He did a lot of work with Jean-Claude, or not Jean-Claude Conti, um, uh, Oscar Van Deventer. They've yeah. done a lot of work together, but he's done a ton of work with a whole bunch of different people. Um, he was uh, German born, 
but he my understanding is he lived in hong kong for most of his life oh okay. but yeah just just an amazing guy and i know here at puzzle master they really we really enjoyed our interactions with him he was phenomenal and it, it's a sad day um, just to see him pass the the really cool thing though in the the, the in, the, in this situation is that his son, uh, Ulrich, is my understanding is he's taken over the company. Oh, okay. So Mefferts is not going to die with its creator, but will be continued by his son, which is that's that's really cool. So, uh, yeah, go check out our website and find a bit more of uh, Mefferts stuff if you aren't familiar with it. Some great, great puzzles. I think, um, yeah, one of my favorite, I think he did the um, he did the box with the Oscar, the opening one of the Oh, Rubik's Oscar's that, treasure oh, chest. Oscar treasure chest. I think that was Mavericks. Yeah. I I like that one where it's like a treasure chest that opens up. It's a Rubik's cube that opens up. It's been one of our most popular ones yeah, lately. Yeah, it's a great one. But yeah, go to our website puzzlemaster.ca to find more about all the products we talked about here today. And thank you guys for watching. Tune in again next month for episode one thirty two. See ya.